Hi everyone, welcome to today's class. I'm Steph, I'm a zookeeper here, and I'm here to talk to you about our wallaby mob. So follow me. So what are wallabies? Wallabies are marsupials, meaning the females have front pouches that help carry their children. So a group of wallabies is referred to as a mob. Although wallabies are solitary animals, meaning they like to be alone, unless it's time for breeding or eating. They're from Australia, they live in forests, meaning they like to eat a different type of leaves and trees and browse. So they are prey species, meaning they have to have a bunch of different adaptations to help them get the benefits and to eat the food that they need to eat. So if you've been tuning in to all of our channels, you've probably learned the term crepuscular, meaning they're the most active at dawn and dusk. This helps them because they don't get spotted as easily. Now, they gather in mobs, which can consist up to 30 different wallabies, and that's kind of to help them almost do with some type of neighborhood surveillance. As you'll see here, they can move their ears 180 degrees. That's kind of so they can eat food without even having to lift their head up. They can hear their noisy neighbor chewing very loudly, or they can hear a predator and flee the scene. Now that I've talked all 180 degrees of your ears off, why don't we meet our mob? So this is Daisy. She's the newest addition to our mob. She's about four years old. She is here to help breed with one of our males. As you see here on her left ear, she has a big tag. That's solely for identification purposes. It's kind of like a cool little earring. They don't feel it at all. In fact, she thinks she's stylish. Some of her favorite foods are peanuts, bananas, and although she really does love leaves. This is Foster. He's one of our males here. He's four years old and he was actually born here at the zoo. As you'll see on him, he also has an ear tag. He's yellow and black. So as you see with these guys here, they very commonly get confused for kangaroos. I mean, why wouldn't you? Kangaroos and wallabies are both marsupials. In fact, they're both part of the same family, being macropods. But there's three big differences you can see between them. First being size. Wallabies are much, much smaller than kangaroos. They range about one to two feet and about five to 50 pounds whereas kangaroos are nearly double that. They can be about six feet and nearing about 200 pounds. Next, if you can't really see the size difference, you can definitely see a color difference. As you see with our guys here, they're very, very vibrant. You'll see that they have all different shades of whites and grays and browns. Kangaroos have more muted colors and they're more often gray and brown. Lastly, one of the most intrusive intriguing things about them is their teeth. Now, what really, really makes them different is an evolutionary difference, and that's based off of the locations where you can find them. Wallabies, in general, are found in bushlands and forest areas, so you see that their legs to their knees, they're very, very short, making them very agile and able to jump on things in the forest, whereas kangaroos have more longer legs, and that's to help them in open areas, and that's so they can run really, really fast. Next, their mouth, so what they eat consists of different things. With the wallabies being from the forest, they really like to eat leaves and trees and shrubs, and to chew that, they kind of need flat set of molars. And that's to kind of grind the grass up and grind all the food up. Whereas kangaroos, they actually have more curvature to their teeth and their crowns are more um, out there, just kind of meaning it helps them rip uh, grass up out of the ground and cut it with their teeth. It's a lot, lot sharper. So those are the three differences between um, kangaroos and wallabies. I'm going to be working on Target with Daisy today. Daisy, Target. Good. Target. Good. And as you see here, you can actually get a little closer look on her incisors. Those are flat, they help kind of rip up all the trees and chew. The motion is actually a lot different than ours. They like to chew things side to side, whereas we kind of chew things up and down. 
target. You can see they get very distracted. Easy. Target. Good. before wallabies have pouches so today's challenge is show us your pouch this one's mine do you see the resemblance hi guys Nikki here again I'm joined um, by Kiwi she's our ambassador animal um, here at the zoo she is our ambassador redneck wallaby so you learned about wallabies with Steph um, they're pretty cool marsupials and again marsupials are animals that carry their baby in pouches um, And it's actually really cool when they do have young um, their babies are born quite tiny um, About the size of a jelly bean. So that jelly bean once it's born it actually has to climb up into the pouch um, Which is quite a distance for just a jelly bean, right? Um, and they make it all the way up to the pouch and that's where they're gonna spend about eight months so they're gonna spend eight months in the pouch, um, and then at, at around eight months, they're gonna start exploring outside the pouch, um, eating some food off the ground. Like um, Steph mentioned earlier, um, their teeth are really designed to help pull roots out of the ground and kind of help eat the things that they eat. And they are found in Australia um, and Tasmania. Um, that's where the redneck wallabies are found. And they get that name because of the coloration of their coat. Um, Stephanie mentioned earlier, they're kind of vibrant in all their different colors. Um, and their coat kind of does have a reddish gleam to it. Um, so that's primarily where they'll get their name. So Kiwi here is about three years old. Um, she was hand raised um, by the staff in the education department, um, which is really important because these guys are prey animals. Um, so they get very skittish. Um, and by hand raising her, we were able to create um, a better bond with her. Um, so that way she wasn't scared of us so we can bring her out to schools um, and nursing homes and libraries um, where you can actually see Kiwi when we come visit or if you come visit the zoo and do a special program. Um, and you saw that in the zoo we can't really get too close to the wallabies in there. Um, and again, it just goes back to them being prey animals. And again, that is animals that are eaten by predators. Um, so they do have all of their senses and adaptations um, in order to avoid predation and to run really fast, right? She's got these nice big legs. She's really good at hopping and jumping. Um, I'm pretty sure they can run about 25 miles an hour. Um, so they're pretty fast.